This week on Maker Update, a face tracking chocolate launcher, Teensy 4.1, a pie powered pupper, a flaming lamp, a steampunk tub, a people detecting mask, and a VHS video drone. Hey, I'm Donald Bell, back with another Maker Update. I hope you're doing all right. It's still weird and scary out there, but uh, I am glad I've got my projects to help absorb my attention. I hope you've got something like that too that you can just lose yourself in. If you don't, I've got some cool projects this week that might do the trick. So let's get started with the project of the week. Check out how Harrison McIntyre made this face detecting M&M launcher using a Raspberry Pi computer, a webcam, two Arduino Nano boards, and a handful of servos. There have been a number of candy launching projects out there, but for the most part, they've relied on some form of spring-loaded launcher. For this design, Harrison went with a flywheel launcher like you'd see on a baseball pitching machine. Not only does this approach allow for a rapid fire of candy, but also allows you to ramp the velocity up and down by adjusting the flywheel speed. This way you can adjust both the angle of the launch and the velocity, giving you more control over hitting your target. Now to do the targeting, Harrison is using OpenCV on Raspberry Pi to detect faces and triangulate the mouth location. What's even crazier is that it's using that face data to approximate your distance from the camera. As the icing on the cake, he's using an Amazon Echo Dot to handle voice control by configuring the Pi so that the Echo recognizes it as a TV that it can control. All he has to do is ask the Echo to increase the volume by one and he'll get one M&M launched at his face. To make it a little more natural, he named his imaginary TV Chocolate, so that if he asks his Echo to increase his chocolate volume by two, he gets two M&Ms launched at his face. And though I wouldn't recommend it, it is possible to have this thing launch an uninterrupted stream of high-speed candy at you. His current design only holds a magazine of 10 M&Ms at a time, but that seems like a relatively easy hurdle to overcome. It's a great project and a really fun and informative video. All of his code is posted on GitHub, along with the STLs for some of the 3D printed parts. Now for some news. The announcement is over a week old at this point, but I wanted to make sure you knew that there's a new version of the Arduino compatible Teensy microcontroller board available. This is version 4.1. It uses a 600 megahertz ARM Cortex M7 processor along with eight megabytes of flash, making it the fastest microcontroller project board out there. It can also work with 100 megabit per second ethernet, which could be useful for IoT projects, but maybe also for high-speed LED animation projects or projects where data needs to move quickly over long wired connections. The board is priced at just under $27. Now for more projects, the Stanford University Student Robotics Group has a new guide on how to make this little pie-powered quadruped robot. The little pupper sounds like Edward Scissorhands when it moves, but it definitely has some of the pedigree of the Boston Dynamics Spot Robot. Only instead of paying tens of thousands of dollars, this little guy can be made for under $900. Now to be fair, this thing isn't autonomous at all. You control it with a wireless PlayStation controller. Still, kind of cool to be the only nerd on your block with your own RC quadruped robot. You can find the instructions and a detailed bill of materials with links to 3D printed parts using the link in the description. On Hackaday, Yelly Lab shows off his flame-throwing Aladdin's lamp. Probably don't try this one at home on account of the 3D printed plastic enclosure, the whole fire shooting aspect, and the high voltage, but you have to appreciate how this thing was designed. Inside you have a relay, a microphone, a small pump, an 18650 rechargeable battery, and a spark generator that turns a 5 volt input into a 400,000 volt spark. Because the design is so small, they went with an Arduino programmable Digispark AT-Tiny85 board that's about the size of a quarter. It's also interesting to note that the fuel used here is just hand sanitizer with a little boric acid mixed in for color. I've never seen anything like it. Not sure if I want to build one, but I like knowing how it's done. On Instructables, Lost Wax shows how he was able to create this custom steampunk bathtub valve using a 3D printed design he created entirely in Tinkercad. I love the way this thing looks. It's also just refreshing to see someone who's completely new to 3D design and 3D printing just diving right in and trying out all sorts of techniques. For example, he made this awesome scroll work by printing it flat, warming it up in water, and then molding it around the wheel before gluing it down. Not only does this conceal the seam between the two halves of the wheel, but it looks so cool and gives a nice texture. Through the Arduino blog, I caught this video from Chen the Design Maker who attempted to design a high-tech face mask 
that automatically closes up when it detects that people are around. The design ultimately was more trouble than it was worth, but it looks super cool and it's a treat to watch Chen work through the problem. And through the Adafruit blog, I found out about the Videodrome project by Max Hasslein. This is a Pi-based video player that plays random 20 second clips from the VHS vault at archive.org. To make it happen, you have to first download a selection of videos, though Max's guide shows how to automate this. With that done, you just set up the Pi to run the script when it boots, lay back, and treat yourself to a nostalgia brain scramble. Now for some tips and tools. On Tested, Adam Savage talks about why he's returned to wearing a utility apron around the shop and goes through his pockets to reveal what things he likes to keep handy. On the Cool Tools channel, Sean Michael Reagan reveals why a quarter inch ratcheting box end is a uniquely adaptable tool to have handy. Because that quarter inch socket fits any standard quarter inch bit, it can work like a universal driver. Check out his video. In Gareth Bramwin's latest tips, tools, and shop tales newsletter, he features a tip from Maker Project Lab's own Tyler Weingarner, who made a holder for his crosscut sled on the side of his table saw. He also includes a great chart from Bolt Depot that helps to demystify the naming conventions of different kinds of fasteners. And this Saturday, don't forget to tune into Virtually Maker Fair. It's going to be a day long event with demos and talks from makers all over the world. Mark your calendar. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, check out their video on environmental sensors, air quality sensors, humidity, temperature, pressure, all of them can be easily incorporated into your next project. In fact, for their demo, they use an Adafruit BME 680 breakout board that includes versions of all of those sensors. You can read their values from an Arduino using SPI or I squared C. Using Adafruit's example code, you can use the Arduino serial monitor to read a running update on the temperature, pressure, humidity, or air quality level, and your approximate altitude. Those same values could be automatically tracked in an IoT dashboard or used to trigger different lights or sounds as the basis of some kind of environmental sensing interaction. And that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment. Uh, maybe leave a comment about what kind of project you're looking for from the world because it's kind of crazy that the hands-free candy shooter I was asking for a couple weeks ago materialized into a face-tracking candy shooter in this week's show. So use that space to request what you want from the universe and maybe it'll happen. Uh, big thanks to my patrons on Patreon and to DigiKey Electronics for making this show possible and for having all the stuff that makes all these projects possible. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.